At this session, we will explore how to use the prompt function. Along the way, we will revisit the choice and multi-choice functions to deepen our understanding of their differences and learn how to use each effectively. We will begin with the choice function, using it to create a simple user interface. Then move on to the multi-choice function, gradually building complexity. Finally, we will integrate the prompt function to enhance and augment the script's functionality. Let us start by defining a function called show menu. Inside this function, we create a local variable named menu. We assign it the value returned by the choice function. This function takes a table with four options, gold, health, experience, and exit. The second argument of the choice function is nil, meaning there is no default value selected. The third argument is a string, which is the title of the menu, in this case, simple game. After calling choice, we check if the value of menu is nil. If it is, that means no option was selected, so we simply return and exit the function. We check the value of menu using a series of if statements. If the value of menu is equal to 1, it means the gold option was selected, so we call the gold function. If menu is equal to 2, the health option was selected, so we call the health function. If menu is equal to 3, the experience option was selected, so we call the experience function. Finally, if menu is equal to 4, the exit option was chosen. In this case, we show an alert message and then we use the OS exit function to close the script and exit the program. Now, let us look at the functions that correspond to the options in the menu. First, we define the gold function. Inside this function, we display an alert with the message gold is loaded. Next, we define the health function. When called, this function will display an alert with the message health is loaded. Lastly, we define the experience function. When executed, this function will show an alert with the message experience is loaded. These functions simply display alerts based on the menu option chosen by the user. Finally, we have an infinite loop that runs continuously. Inside this loop, we first check if the game guardian interface is visible. 
If the interface is visible, we set it to be invisible and then we call the show menu function to display the menu to the user. If the interface is not visible, the script will pause briefly for 100 milliseconds by calling the sleep function before checking again. This process repeats endlessly, allowing the user to interact with the menu while keeping the game guardian interface hidden. The choice function is used for single choice menus, allowing the user to select one option from a list. It returns the index of the selected option, which controls the flow of the script. In this case, we display four options, gold, health, experience, and exit, and based on the index returned, we execute the corresponding action. This function is ideal for simple menus with a single choice. We will replace the choice function with the multi-choice function and make a few other adjustments to adapt the script. First, we will replace the else if statements with if statements and add end after each one to ensure the structure is clear and properly closed. Next, we will modify the way we check the selected options to work with multi-choice. Instead of using equal signs to compare the selected value, we will use bracket notation to check if specific options have been chosen. This allows for multiple selections in the menu, which is the primary feature of the multi-choice function. The multi-choice function is different from choice because it allows the user to select multiple options at the same time. Instead of returning a single index like choice does, it returns a table where each option is marked as true if selected or nil if not selected. This means we can check multiple selections at once and take actions for each selected option independently. It is ideal for cases where the user needs to activate or interact with more than one feature or setting at the same time, making it more flexible than the single selection choice function. Unlike choice or multi-choice, which select predefined options, prompt allows users to input their own data, such as numbers or text. You can create forms with custom labels, default values, and input types, making it ideal for scripts that require user-specific input and greater interactivity. We will now enhance the gold feature by adding a prompt to ask the user to manually input their current gold value. First, we create a local variable named data and assign it the result of the prompt function. The prompt takes three arguments, a table with the label input which is your current gold value, a default value of zero, and the input type which is set to number. Next, we check if data is nil. If it is, it means the user canceled the prompt, so the script will simply return and stop further execution. We add a check to see if the data returned by the prompt is nil. If it is, this means the user canceled the input. In that case, the script uses the return statement to exit the function without continuing further. This prevents any errors or unintended behavior if no value is provided. We take the user's input from the prompt and process it. First, we convert the input value to a number using the toNumber function and store it in a variable called userValue. This ensures the input is treated as a numeric value. Then, we use the searchNumber function to search for the user's value combined with the number 1000. 
This is done by concatenating user value with the semicolon and 1000, specifying the search type as dword. After the initial search, we call refine number with user value to narrow the results to only the user's value. Finally, we use get results to retrieve up to 100 matching results and store them in a variable called results. After retrieving the search results, we check if there are any results using the length operator with the results variable. If results exist, we use the edit all function to set all matching values to 100,000. Then, we clear the results from memory with the function clear results and display an alert saying gold has been set to 100,000. If no results are found, an alert is shown with the message failed to find gold, letting the user know that the operation did not succeed. This block demonstrates how to use the prompt function to make the script interactive by allowing the user to input a specific value, in this case, their current gold amount. The prompt function enables dynamic adjustments as the user's input is used to search for and modify the corresponding in-game value. This shows how prompt can be utilized to create scripts that adapt to the user's unique data, making them more flexible and functional. For our second example, we will demonstrate how to add a password prompt to the script, showcasing the versatility of the prompt function. This allows us to ask the user for a password before they can proceed with the rest of the script. By using prompt, we can create an interactive and secure step in the script, highlighting the wide range of use cases for this function. In this block, we are encoding a password by shifting each character's ASCII value. We start by defining a variable, obfuscated key, as an empty string and a variable, allowed key, with the value 1234. This is the original password we want to obfuscate. Then, we use a for loop to go through each character in allowed key. For each character, we retrieve its ASCII value using byte, add one to the value to shift it, and then convert the new ASCII value back to a character using string char. This new character is then added to the obfuscated key string. 
For example, if a loud key is 1234, obfuscated key will become 2345. We use the prompt function to ask the user for a password. The prompt function displays a prompt with the label password and expects the input to be a number. If the user does not provide a value and cancels the prompt, the function will return nil. We check if the key variable is nil. If it is, meaning the user canceled or provided no input, we exit the script using OS exit. In this block, we check if the user's input matches the obfuscated password. We compare the value entered by the user with the obfuscated key. If the input is correct and matches obfuscated key, we display an alert saying password approved. If the password is incorrect, we show an alert saying wrong password. And then, finally, exit the script using the OS exit function to stop further execution. Just like with numerical passwords, the same method can be used for textual or mixed passwords. The process involves shifting the ASCII values of each character regardless of whether it is a letter or number. This allows you to securely handle any combination of characters. When the user enters the password, the script compares it to the obfuscated version to verify the input. To summarize, the prompt function in Game Guardian allows us to create interactive scripts by collecting user input, whether it is numbers, text, or mixed values. It is a versatile tool for making scripts more dynamic and personalized, enabling features like password protection, custom value inputs, and a range of user interactions such as selecting from predefined options or entering custom settings.